photoguru.com featuring Steve Harmon. Hey guys, this is Steve Harmon again with stockphotoguru.com and we're on video five now of our series from taking you from being a complete novice and all the way to managing a professional stock photo portfolio and making good residual income. So video number five here is a big one. It's workflow. Now I've got my own workflow that I'm going to give you. There's various workflows. I'm probably going to get some comments on here about, well, I don't like what you, I don't like how you do it. You know, there, there's plenty of people who've got various workflows. If you want to use someone else's workflow, it's fine. But I'm telling you how I do it and how I want you to do it so that uh, it's, it's easy to do. And once you learn a good workflow, um, you can tweak it and manage it. The real important thing about workflow here is being able to A, back up your images, and B, being able to catalog your images so that you know how to easily find them whenever you need to be able to reaccess them. And all images that I have, I back up. I actually back up all my images on hard drive and on DVD, but for you, um, I wouldn't say you necessarily have to back them all up on, on, on hard drives. It does get a little expensive after a while of backing everything up that way, but um, definitely back everything up on DVD. And um, DVDs are a – they're not guaranteed to be used, uh, good for life. Neither are hard drives. But I would say whenever you get a new hard drive, find a way to back up. If you're using Macintosh, they've got a really good backup system on, on – uh, the, the new OS X, but if you've got uh, Windows, I'm sure there's other backing up systems that can back up your whole computer. But um, also there's a lot of really neat things now where you can get in the cloud. You can use Dropbox, or I know that Microsoft has some pretty cool cloud services, even through Hotmail, where you can like just dump tons of information. Uh, Google has places where you can dump information too. So um, think about also, uh, that that's probably where the future is going to be going as far as keeping your information in the cloud. That way, if you have a house fire or you lose your laptop or someone steals it, you're still going to have information um, there and you're going to be able to get it. So um, the first thing about um, our workflow, we've got um, our first flow, workflow is our shooting workflow. So before we actually uh, take a photograph, there's a couple things we want to think about. We talked about it in the last video, or excuse me, video four, um, about white balance. So think about white balance. Um, it's not always essential. I wouldn't say stop taking a photograph, but think about using the settings in your white balance or learn how to set a manual white balance. Again, I'm not going to get into that, but, but, but go on to YouTube if you don't know what I'm talking about. So you can set a white balance under your camera and that'll adequately give you the correct color. You can go in and tweak colors later, but when we start off, we want to have the right color. And when you shoot in raw, we're always going to shoot in raw here, you can go back and adjust that. However, start off by shooting the right white balance, and you're going to be miles ahead. Learn about white balance and how important that is because um, it's really going to be able to make sure that you what you see color-wise is actually what you get. So. It's really important to work on white balance. The next thing I'm going to talk about here is your sensor. Your CMOS or your CCD sensor, depending on the type of manufacturer you have, can get dirty. And those spots will show up on your images, and you'll either have to remove them through Photoshop later. Um, but it's, it's much better to always do things right the first time instead of doing things four or five times later, and sometimes removing spots can be a real drag. Now, a lot of different cameras have automatic sensor cleaning, and there's various ways of doing it. Some, there's some wipes out there. There's these little uh, tools where you can grab sensor spots out of it. You can use canned air. I'm not going to tell you the right way to do it. Sometimes I use canned air. I think it actually works kind of good as long as you hit it from an angle and don't make sure you, like, sometimes when you do canned air, it'll fog, and it'll shoot out a bunch of, like, um, liquid chemical, and you don't want to put that on your CCD or your sensor. So um, I usually... I hold it, my camera like this, take the lens off. There's a setting on your camera that will that will pop the mirror up so it'll actually be able to expose your sensor. When you look at it, it's kind of it looks rainbowy like or whatever, and you'll see what it is. But uh, I kind of hit it at an angle and make sure I'm not shooting down with the can there. And that's usually when all the funk comes out of it. You want to hit it at the side and not do not do air directly at it. That's one way of doing it. There's various ways of cleaning your sensor, but make sure you get a clean sensor. The more wide open you are, so if you shoot on that 50 millimeter lens that we're talking about, you're going to see less sensor spots. The more closed down you are, if you're shooting like F22, you're going to see a lot more sensor spots. So, uh, something just to always be aware of. Clean your sensor. Keep it clean and you'll save yourself a lot of work before or after you're done shooting. So um, one thing to do is, especially if you're going to buy an older camera, 
one that is a six megapixel or eight megapixel camera, shoot at, and, and I would say this for any camera, but especially if it's an older camera, make sure you shoot at the, um, the slowest ISO possible that you can get away with. Um, that, that, that means that back in the film days, ISO was how sensitive your film was to light. But the thing about that also is it took a lot more, for example, 100 speed film or 50 speed film, it would take a lot more light to expose that than it would like 3200 speed film. Um, the, w what you get when you're dealing with ISO, the, 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 um, the smaller the number, the less grain typically, and the higher the number, like a 3200 speed film, you're going to get a lot of grain with that. So um, grain's not always a bad thing. Um, it, it, it can be cool. You want to start off, however, for the most part, use the, um, use the lowest possible ISO you can. If you can shoot 50, great. If you can shoot, um, but those other factors involved too. You don't want a blurry image. You don't want to um, have to. Sh n not all images you want to shoot at one eight. It might be it might be too shallow of a depth of field. So consider what you're doing there. I would go up to four hundred maximum. Um, I've I've got some newer cameras, and man, I even think at like six forty or eight hundred, or sometimes a thousand, they're acceptable. But but don't do that. Don't start off that way. Shoot it at 100 if you can at least. Some cameras let you do 50. So um, do that. Um, on your camera, you're going to notice that uh, you, you, on your lens, excuse me, there's going to be different sweet spots in the lens. You can you can investigate on kind of where you want to with, – with how um, you're shooting a particular – uh, a product or a home things like product sometimes i like shooting those um, a little more wide open which gives you uh, a shallower depth of field which kind of gives you a cool look for that portraits the same way i like shooting those with a little more shallower depth of field when you start shooting things, things like homes and stuff you want to be able to cover a lot more things in focus the more shallow depth of field the less things um, are going to be in focus or the less planes are going to be in focus i want to say planes the, the narrower the plane is, that's going to be in focus. So things like houses, landscape, things like that, you're probably going to want to shoot at at least f8 to f22. Uh, objects, you're going to have a little more latitude with that. And um, again, you're going to be able to have more um, less light. You'll be able to shoot wider open. You can learn about some of these things, how your shutter speed, how your f-stop, and how your ISO all relate to each other by going on some other videos if you don't know anything about that. But... Um, just kind of listen to what I'm saying for now. So uh, that's video 5A, which explains kind of your shooting workflow. The next video we're going to show you is going to be your post-production workflow. So make sure you like us on Facebook. Make sure you leave us a comment. If you've got any questions, if you have any corrections or anything you want to add to this, please add those in the comments. We want to hear it. Thanks so much.